today we're going to make butter. You can make butter in lots of different containers. In the Middle Ages they used large wooden butter churns, but we want to make a more modest amount of butter today. This is a medieval appropriate stoneware crock that you could make butter in. However, today we are going to make butter in a butter churn that you can make for less than five dollars. So this is our five dollar butter churn. When we teach butter classes at events, we generally charge five dollars, which covers not only this butter churn, but also our handout and the cream. So this is made of your standard wide mouth mason jar, which we purchased at our local store with the ring. And then we took a piece of thin plastic and cut a hole in the middle and cut it to fit inside of the screw on ring. The other part of this is the dasher. And the dasher, we requested our local woodworking boys to make, but you can easily make one of these in your garage. It is a section of dowel, uh, about a foot and a half long, and then a piece of pine in which several holes have been drilled. These could also be cross-shaped or a variety of other shapes. So we assemble this by putting the dasher in, and then we are going to pour in cream and this is heavy whipping cream from the grocery store. It is not a special kind of cream. It is not a specific type of cream for butter making. It's just the whipping cream that you would buy to do any other cooking project. So this is obviously something that in the Middle Ages you would need to do if you had dairy animals because milk by itself does not last very long. And if you want to preserve it, you need to do something like make it into cheese or butter. Butter making is fairly fast and easy, and all you need to do is put your butter into your container and then move the dasher up and down. However, if you move your dasher up and down in a sort of a slow fashion, this will take all night. What you need to do is use vigor when making butter. So in general, and this uh, particular uh, dasher squeaks slightly, so I will not talk while I'm making the butter, you need to make your butter about like this. Immediately becomes obvious why you need a lid, because if you do not have a nice tight fitting lid, you will have cream everywhere. And even with this fit tight fitting lid, you are still going to get messy, so don't do this in your very best clothing. about a 20 to 30 minute break while we have been churning our butter and at this point it is beginning to uh, thicken considerably and turn into something that is like thick whipping cream and uh, as I pull the stick up you can see that it is no longer a liquid consistency on the stick but rather actually a solid and this is the same process we've been using the entire time so you continue to churn the butter at this point until it breaks so it will turn abruptly into a solid and a liquid and this is a messy messy game uh, you want to make butter either outside when it is warm or we have been making butter in a large plastic box or perhaps on a floor that you can easily clean this gets cream and butter pretty much everywhere as you make it Butter has been an important food source pretty much since humans domesticated cows and other dairy animals, but it is difficult to tell in archaeological digs from milk. So our first recorded instances of butter are in the Bible, and it, it continues to be popular through the Middle Ages depending on things like the climate. Cold regions have a lot of butter, whereas warm places have much less because it melts and doesn't keep as well. And it also changes in fashion. Um, before the Renaissance, butter was fairly rare in recipes, whereas during the Renaissance, it became very common and a uh, fashionable ingredient that everyone wanted to eat. So it's been 10 minutes since our uh, last check-in with the camera. And what we now have is butter and buttermilk which have separated from one another so we're going to take off our lid and deal with what is in our jar and quite often when you do this the butter attaches itself to your dasher and this is sometimes good because you can sort of pull out a giant lump of butter and leave buttermilk behind it sometimes it doesn't do that when you open it up you can kind of push the butter down into the bottom of the jar with the dasher and make it all stick together so that you can pour out the buttermilk easier 
So in this case, our butter did not stick to our dasher. So we're going to pull our dasher out. And you can tell when the butter is done because it abruptly separates into two very separate things. One of them, a milk consistency liquid, the buttermilk, which is what I'm pouring off right now. And the other one is a very golden solid. And in full sunlight, this difference is immediately obvious. The butter is, well, butter yellow, whereas the buttermilk is still quite white. So now we have mostly just butter left in the bottom of our jar, which we're going to press together to try to get out as much of the buttermilk as possible. And the buttermilk is really good, by the way. So the way that this actually works, so the separation, so what actually happens sort of scientifically when the oil and the water separate is that in milk, you have little tiny globules of fat, which are surrounded by uh, phospholipids, which keep them separate from the water in the milk. And when you bash them a whole bunch, you actually break off those phospholipids and proteins that have been surrounding the oil globules, and then the oil can stick together separate from the water. Oil and water generally don't go together. So that's what you get when you get the separate solids and liquids. These are the fats, and these are the uh, water-based components. The proteins. The proteins and the phospholipids go, a lot of, most of them go into here, which is why Buttermilk is used as an emulsifier in things like pancakes because it makes a very smooth dough because those emulsifiers help the oil stick together with the water. So we are going to go on to washing momentarily. First, we want to talk about why this buttermilk is not like the buttermilk you buy in the store. So this buttermilk is from what's called sweet cream butter, which generally in the United States, if you buy butter, it's labeled sweet cream butter. And that means that it has been churned from cream sort of straight from the cow. It has not been cultured in any way. Uh, culturing, the most obvious culture is yogurt um, or cheese or buttermilk. So the standard, if you go to the grocery store and buy buttermilk, that is actually skim milk that has had a, a variety of good bacteria and yeasts grown in it. You can make cultured butter and cultured butter is very good. If you want to do that, before you start the process that we've shown today, the night before, you would mix with your cream a specific culture of bacteria and yeasts and allow that to grow overnight and then culture your cream in the morning. Um, in the Middle Ages, that would have all happened in the butter churn because butter churns were wooden and wood is fairly porous and allows lots of things to live in it. This sweet cream buttermilk is totally delicious and tastes nothing like the buttermilk that you get in the store. If you get this, this is your reward for all of your hard work in butter making. You should drink it. Mm, best thing ever. So now we are going to wash the butter. And the most important part of washing is to have very, very cold water. Because if you have not very, very cold water, then your butter will melt. And that is very sad. So first step in washing is to squish all of your butter together in a pile in some kind of slanty dish. And a lot of the buttermilk can just be pressed out at this point, and then you want a slanty dish so that the liquid will run out and you can dump it out without dumping out your butter. So the why would we want to wash our butter, and why is it important to wash our butter? So the reason that we take a lot of time washing butter is because the milk solids that are in the whey so the part that, or in the buttermilk, the part that we're dumping out, have um, all the, have a lot of proteins in them, and those will cause our butter to go bad much faster than if we rinse it out. I, at one point, made uh, some butter and was storing it on the counter and had not washed it correctly, and it ended up smelling like blue cheese, which is a problem. So, we want to dump any buttermilk into our into a container because as we stated before, buttermilk is yummy. And then eventually we will start pouring cold water over our milk and then pressing that out again. So we're going to add cold water, squash it around with the butter, and you have to keep washing it. So keep adding cold water and squishing 
the butter around in the cold water until the water runs clear. And that's when you know that you've gotten out most of the milk solids into the buttermilk and your butter will then last for a lot longer. The other way you make butter last for a long time is salting, that you can't salt until after you have finished washing. Because as most of us know, salt is water soluble and we are hoping to take away anything that is water soluble at this point. So we're going to continue washing until all the water soluble things are out. If we had added salt, say when we were churning or before we were finished washing, and then we would also wash out the salt at that point. So we've come back to washing. Uh, we've been washing several different times until our water is much more clear. And our next step is going to be salting. So we need to both wash and salt to inhibit bacterial growth. If you don't wash it and don't salt it, then the bacteria think that the milk proteins that are left in the butter are extra good. and your unsalted butter will go bad much faster than salted butter. It will actually go rancid. So the salted butter, on the other hand, can be kept for a very long time. Uh, Scandinavians could pay their taxes in butter, and the documents from the Middle Ages talk about rich men having a mountain of gold, and they don't mean gold the metal, they mean gold the butter, underneath their house. It's generally, of course, best kept someplace cold, as if you try to keep it someplace warm, it will melt. So here we are going to add some salt. You want to add a fair amount of salt. If you're going to eat it soon, you don't have to add a ton of salt, but the more salt you add, the longer you'll be able to keep it. Uh, there have been discoveries of buckets and barrels of butter that were heavily salted and then buried in a bog. And the butter is actually still good hundreds of years later. The other point we wanted to make is that this fairly modest amount of butter came from one very tiny container of cream, only a half pint of cream. So one half pint of cream gives this much butter and our sort of half glass of buttermilk that we drank earlier. So this is a fairly, it has a fairly high yield as far as milk preservation techniques. And if you properly wash and salt your butter, it will be available for your use for many years. If you too heavily salt it though, you will have to rewash it before you can eat it because too heavily salted butter is not particularly yummy.